This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 16th of September 2019, and I am 2J. I am 2M. And I am GK. And in case you missed the headlines, here they are. Yep. In the Daily Nation, mm. inside a web of lies that led police to Cohen's body. Mm -hmm. In the Star, Cohen gave sister 400 million shilling villa in Will. Mm. <laughs> and in the Standard, Ryla Fury at ODM officials over Kibra nomination mess. Mm. Mm. I There's been a lot of murder and intrigue and crime yes. in the headlines. Yes. But this is a continuing story. Yes. yes that's true. He was missing 55 days, days. today. I think. Yeah, yeah 55 yeah. days. And then, yeah, yeah, they've now found his body yeah. in a septic tank. Should yes. we do the two together? Absolutely. Yes, I think so. Okay. So yeah. the star says Cohen gave sister 400 million shilling villa in the will. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think adds some more intrigue. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it does. And, you know, I was watching this on Saturday, yes. and I, it looked like a uh, scene out of CSI. You see, uh, Patrick Merori, former MP, mm. sits down and he said that in the day that this man disappeared, mm. he spoke to him for 15 minutes, mm. and this man told him, uh, in case I die or I get killed, the person responsible is this person called Wairimo. His wife. His wife. Mm -hmm. And this guy had actually, this uh, Tom Co Cohen had got the, co the police with concerns over his life. Yeah. So I asked myself, this man would go back to the house that the threat of his life existed. lays. Yeah. Existed. However, this is hearsay from Patrick Mwerori. Yeah. That's his word against everybody else. Yeah. Mm. So I will say this. Mm. Uh, according to the timeline in the nation, because mm. the nation gave a really good timeline. Yeah. Um, there was a fight, so he plays golf on the 15th of July. Yeah. yeah. Then they have, uh, in July 19th, mm. uh, or 18th and 19th, mm. um, the water tank is, uh, this septic tank is in the empty, house, yes. or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But then they have a fight. Yes. Mm. And uh, Cohen comes to the house, yeah. and he comes with cops. Yes. And Wairimo also calls another set of cops. Yes. Mm. And now there's a clash of cops in this Kichisuru home. Yes, I have. Right? Her cops, his cops. Yes. Now, when <laughs> they're leaving, when the cops are leaving, they're saying, okay, so you both have P3s. Yes. We'll see you on the 22nd of July. Come yes. to court. Note that date. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the next time we are told yeah. Cohen is seen alive yes. is 19th July. Yes. When he goes to Muthago Golf Club. Yes. And I assume that's when he apparently has that conversation with, with Mirori. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. However, there's a series of things that don't add up. Yes. Could she have done a whole murder thing just to escape a P3 court charge? Yeah, that given that they've mm -hmm. fought multiple times before. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not, for me, it's not <laughs> strange that he would go back home. Yeah. Because they fought multiple times. Yeah, lovers' quarrels, all that. Yeah. And crimes of passion defy logic. Mm. So if I'm fighting with my husband or whatever it is, I mean, I will go home. We'll fight. Yeah. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe he went home. You see, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, there, is, uh, there was a divorce case before that. Yes. And yes. after this lady goes to the Dutch embassy to report that mm -hmm. this man has gone to, missing. to Malaysia. This is on the 22nd treatment. of Apparently Th he Thailand. goes to Thailand, Thailand. for yeah, some yeah. health Thailand. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, somehow, somewhere, a letter m uh, appears mm -hmm. and, and it says, oh, now we have reconciled. Yes. Now, my point is this. It might have gotten to a point where I may be saying I'm about to be killed. A reasonable man or a rational man will not go home to that threat. But what I said mm -hmm. are crimes of passion don't have logic. Yeah. But even to this guy. And yeah, I think what also to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling I you. I think what also doesn't make sense is that if they were going to get divorced, she was going to get some money anyway. And she could so actually, why kill him? And to be honest, and not to be rude to the fallen Tom Cohen, he was old. Mm. Wherein was very young. She could have outlived him. And yeah. yeah, collected the money the, anyway. The thing yeah. I think that the star gives us is food for thought. Yes. Mm. This will has been changed multiple times. Yes. yes. The sister now becomes a, a huge the beneficiary. Why yeah. uh -huh. rule her out, In even fact, if she is abroad? And now, so we ask now, Kui Bono Kui at Bono, the end of the day. You see, I saw DCI, our friend from Karura, hugging this lady. Right, and the he, sister, the sister and so called Gabriel, sister. Gabriel. And, uh, and 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 we j just before the the yeah we started yeah we were discussing having this. a discussion. What if uh, it was Werimo 
who had oh, had been you know mm. okay so let's clearly say what you're saying yeah um <laughs> the dci was hugging yes the sister of the fallen of, man of of, of cohen and, exactly. and as yes. the state um investigator yes. he should be impartial absolutely exactly. so ex instantly the imposition or what you're assuming is yeah. that they have already decided they that Wairimo is guilty they yes. have already so, but also, yeah. so we asked yeah. the question yes. if we flipped it yes. if the dci was seen hugging uh -huh. Wairimo, yeah. yes with the knowledge that somebody absolutely. else had died and then right? it turns out that the way was guilty, guilty. Yes. How would DCI look? Huh. And also, Margot has said that uh, DCI keeps playing this in the public. Court. Yes, yeah. yes. And I think that's been a thread yes. of DCI. Yes, mm -hmm. even and, with and, and, previous and, things. And Philip Murgo was once DPP. Yeah. So he would know how DPP thinks. Well, you know, guys, we have a three-part criteria. criteria. Mm -hmm. That means we <laughs> yes. to break down the headlines. Yeah. We ask ourselves whether it is topical or speculative, yeah. mm -hmm. whether it is repetitive or groundbreaking, and whether it is thoughtful or just plain lazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think both these headlines are really quite thoughtful. They're very, yeah. they're very so gripping. When you read the stories, they really give a, a good breakdown. Good, yeah. 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 Daily Nation especially gives you what doesn't make sense. Yes. Mm. You know, you have uh, Patrick Karanja who goes, leaves his phones at, uh, at Wairimo's mm. house. Yes. Car, yeah. Yeah. So he, they've done a good job. But yeah. in terms of headlines, which do we... I would prefer the Daily Nation because combined the story itself and the headline, I think they're fantastic. I would like the star because at the end of the day, they're, looking, they're making it look like there was a prize. Oh, for, yeah, for the... It's yes. true. Yeah. I will a be big the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I will give the Daily Nation. Thank you. Ah. Happy Monday, 2M. Now you are going against me. All right. The standard... <laughs> <laughs> Back to Kibra. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Ryla Fury and ODM officials over Kibra nomination mess. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. last week, Ozone gave us a cartoon where things were topsy turvy. Yeah. yeah. And we said that the nomination process was peaceful for once. Yes. Mm -hmm. Weren't we wrong? Very it, it wrong. The only thing is that ODM didn't air the dirty laundry <laughs> last week. Last week yes. it was Jubilee's uh -huh. turn. Yeah. Um, and now ODM is telling us that all may not have been well. Yes. Mm. Um, in if, terms of nomination. If I was uh, a member of the public, yes. I would tell myself that Fury for Rayla means he's going to lose. And he's going to lose because they have placed a candidate called Mariga who has the most votes in terms of tribe. Mm -hmm. Commands the lawyers and I think he's his lawyer himself. Oh. But you see... Yeah. Um, uh, what Tyler is also telling us yeah. is he does not have confidence in his own uh, party elections and uh, party uh -huh. election officials. They maybe Raila had another candidate in mind, and yeah. in, in maybe it was his daughter. Oh, and so this is all just smoke, yeah. smoke screen. Yes, I think they. Where are you it. taking the paper? Okay. Oh, oh, wait, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I think we're discussing this. Yeah. Honestly, How, yeah, yeah, I think this story just keeps taking new turns every yeah. day. Yes. But I think I also want to get to the point where political parties can actually vet for us good candidates and yeah. be our gatekeepers. Give us. Yeah. I completely good, agree. Good, good, good candidate. Can I toss it? Very far. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> on to the political pieces that we mm -hmm. call cartoons in this country, where we also have a few part criteria that we use to yes. break them down. We yeah. ask ourselves if it is humorous or dry, yes. whether it is satirical or pessimistic, and yes. whether it is effective or just plain lazy. Yes. yes. I see you've started with, with the nation. This is Iga. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there is a drawing there of a mobile phone. And the mobile phone has applications. And uh, the caption there is mobile loan apps. Yeah. And in the applications, uh, one of an icon of a gun, one of an axe, mm. others of pangas, machetes, grenades. Yeah. And, and uh, what all manner of things. It's interesting. Iga today has used what Gado normally has, the little guy in the corner. Yes. Yeah. And it says a thousand, thousand ways, ways to, die. to die. Yeah. I think maybe if we look at this in the context of the standard as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I think there was a report okay. that yes. came out discussing. Abs um, the high interest rates yes. with mobile loan apps. Yes. So let's describe mm. Gamzo then. Yes, let's describe Gamzo. Yeah. Now, it's a drawing of uh, two people, man and woman. The woman is a client. The man, yeah, we can go to Makanga to a bus station. This is how Makangas look. Mm. So they, okay. uh, so mm -hmm. th this is the banks. My, the Makanga guy, you see his eyes are bloodshot. These are micro lenders. And they're walking away they're, from they're the banks. They're walking away from, from the, the banks. banks. Yeah. But their shadow, this guy is actually carrying a, what, what is this? Weapon Hidden there? charges. Yes, it's, like it's a, a weapon. The, the a bludgeon. We, yeah. we, 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 we call it a modiokore. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's called, <laughs> it's labeled hidden charges. Yeah. Now, what the, the depiction here is the banks are safer. But uh, 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 these mobile lenders are predatory, and they are lending mm -hmm. so much money. But the amount of interests that, uh, yeah, that, you are, that, that are charged yeah. on this lo yeah. on these loans are yeah. exorbitant. Yeah, and so it's because um, in the micro lenders don't have to adhere to the central bank cap mm -hmm. rate. Absolutely. So a lot of the time they don't yeah. request collateral. They'll yes. give you the loan almost instantly without any questions. Mm -hmm. yes. And part of the report, what it actually said was that lenders were found to be exploiting insider information about borrowers, mm -hmm. yeah. including their ability to pay. To, to mm -hmm. pay so back. they will prey on two M, knowing that he 
doesn't have the ability to yeah. pay back and yeah. then give him and a int- preferential yeah. loan. Yeah. An interesting fact, yeah. a lot of the blacklisted borrowers on CRB, yes. um, it's for less than a thousand shillings. Mm. So you've been blacklisted, your for whole under, credit is in under default. A thousand bob, yeah. a thousand but, but, but guys, this speaks a lot about human nature. See, if the bank is not lending to markets, someone else will. If one order is not responding to the market, another one will. But the bigger picture here is I think we need to control our monetary policy. If banks, if if Joroge and his team sit down and the the situation has existed for so many years, Mm. then it's time to change it. Reduce reduce the interest rates. I will say these are two very good cartoons. Um, I think I prefer Gamzo Gamzo over Iga. So I'm going to trust Iga as we look at the star, yes. Yes. Ozan has taken us back to uh, Ma- football pitch. Ma- Mariga. Mm. But now I don't think there's any issue again with the VAR. Mariga has been cleared. Yeah, that's true. Mariga has been cleared. Mm-hmm. And uh, But anyway, let me first describe it. It's a caricature of uh, McDonald Mariga and mm-hmm. he's uh, wearing a Jubilee jersey and he's, ab- he's waiting for the referee who's IBC to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Now, the referee is holding a red card. Mm. So the VR machine is meant to validate Determine, as yeah. to whether Mariga committed an offense. Yeah. But because IBC has come out to say, uh, today he's and they said he's been cleared, good to go. So quite interestingly, mm. we had Gamzo of The Standard reach out to us on Twitter yeah. and he sent a side-by-side picture of his drawing that he did on the 14th of September yeah. and this one that Ozone has done today yeah. and he said, doesn't it look quite coincidental that we Could both be, had yeah. the exact same idea? Mm. Yes. So I think we're going to pull up the picture that Gamzo drew and it is exactly the same idea. The yes. VAR, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mariga waiting in the background, waiting for a judgment to be made. Absolutely. I but don't know. We're taking no prisoners this month. Yes. Absolutely. So we I toss say it. we toss it. Also because it's now no longer topical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Old news. Mm-hmm. So have we just decided that Gamzo? Yes. You see, this G- is how it works. If you tweet us, you will win cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Gamzo. Ch- ch- <laughs> okay. And now, yeah. our final thought. And now, our final thought. Inspired by a book entitled Media Control yeah. by a man called Noam Chomsky. Mm-hmm. Or Noam. Or Noam. And, and, and the tagline there is the spectacular achievement by propaganda. Mm-hmm. Can you give a summary? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, as I always do, I repeat what you said. Mm. I like to follow your lead. I know. <laughs> Media Control, the Spectacular Achievements of Propaganda, written by Noam Chomsky in 1995. Yeah. So, Noam Chomsky, if you don't know, mm. is an American linguist, mm. philosopher, mm. cognitive scientist, historian, social critic, and political activist. Yes. He has a long tagline. Yeah. Mm. He's written over 100 books, yes. including his most popular work that I think we covered once before, called mm. Manufacturing Consent, that was yes. written in 1988. Yes. So in this book, he discusses propaganda and the media and how he grounds this in two definitions of democracy. Yes. So his first definition of democracy is what I think we all understand democracy to be. Yeah. A society where the public has a means to participate in a meaningful way in their own existence, mm-hmm. but also that information is open and free. Mm. But then he gives another definition. Yeah. And he says in this one, the public must be barred from managing their own affairs. Mm -hmm. And the means of information must be kept narrowly and rigidly controlled. Okay. It's very uh, very opposite. (laughs) So he actually says that the second definition where things are rigidly controlled is what actually prevails. So we're living in a second ulterior version of democracy. Democracy. And he says that the problem with this version of democracy is that this is how media and disinformation thrive. Mm -hmm. And so I think through this book, you're able to answer a few questions. What is democracy and how does it function? What is propaganda and why does it exist? How is our behavior being shaped by the media? Who is controlling things behind the scenes? And how can can we defend ourselves against propaganda campaigns? Yes. So in the beginning of the book, he gives this story mm. of the first successful propagan- propaganda campaign that was carried out by a modern government. Yeah. And so set the scene, it is World War I. It's yeah. 1916, and Woodrow Wilson has just been elected the president. Yeah. And so the US had no interest in joining World War I. Yes. So the country was in a very passive state. They didn't want to join in on what the crazy Europeans were doing. Yeah. But the, the US... Uh, the the, the Neanderthals. Neanderthals. <laughs> yes. Uh. yes. And so the US decided that they're going to start this propaganda campaign to get the country and rally them into go- joining this war. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they started something called the Creel Commission. Yes. That in only six months, yes. and I will quote, yeah. turned a pacifist population yeah. into a hysterical, yes. war-mongering population which wanted to destroy everything German, mm. go to war, mm. and have Americans be saviors of the world. Yes. Wow. And so in this book, he says that you might think that in order to have propaganda be successful, yeah. you need to send it to uneducated and naive people. Yes. Mm. But he actually says yes. that it's the educated members of society yes. that are typically the most influential. Yes. And those are the people that you should use to disseminate yes. your propaganda. Absolutely. Yeah. And so in the book, he talks about 
about these two groups of people. Yes, yeah? the, the, he, he calls them the bewildered herd and mm -hmm. the specialized class. Yeah. And then first he says, propaganda is the lifeblood of democracy. The common interests elude the bewildered herd. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bewildered herd, he describes them as the spectators. These, these are the Watus, right? And they moan about the state of things of a country. These mm -hmm. are the guys saying corruption or oh, maybe, you know. But the thing about them is that they have little, they have little power to change uh, their, existence. Their, their, their existence and mm -hmm. their state. Mm -hmm. The second group is what they call, he calls the specialized class. Mm -hmm. And the, special, uh, the specialized uh, class are the people who, se who do this. They analyze, they execute, they make decisions, and run things in the political, economic, and ideological system of things. Mm -hmm. All right? But they also, they also make a system. They also make a very small population of, of the country. Yeah. Now, he, uh, in, in, in the reviews and, and, and things, when you think about it, the group that uh, leads this country, mm. all right, in the, in, the, in, the, in the presidencies that we've had, the Moi and the Kibaki presidency were from one school. They, went, they all went to Mango. Yeah. The, the, the current crop of people probably have gone to St. Mary's. Mm. In the UK, half of them, about 19 of them, is it 19 of them? 19, 19 prime ha, ministers. Have become, have become prime ministers. Mm. It tells you about the state of things. You first divide the, 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 the society into structures, and that's how you, you, you take over them. Yeah, yeah, that's so yeah, true. So those 19 prime ministers all came from one college. From one, one yeah, college yeah, called Eton. Yeah, but yeah. the idea there is that uh, there's a symbiotic relationship between political power and class yes. and mm. the private sector elites. You know, yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yes. So I think it's very easy to say that Noam Chomsky falls into the criteria of the yes. specialized class. Yes. Because in the book, he says, please, I'm going to cringe as I say this. Yeah. The masses are too stupid to be yeah. able to understand things. Yes. If they try to participate in managing their own affairs, yeah. mm. they're going to cause trouble. Yes. Absolutely. So they need to be managed and they they, they, right? they, yeah. around these propaganda messages. Exactly. Uh, uh, absolutely. So he has strategies that he says that we fall prey to yes. um, in... Um, in this in this um, scenario, yeah, scenario. Yeah. control, yeah. Yeah. and he says we fall prey to falsification of history. Yes. So basically, at any point, they're trying to stop the masses from ac knowing what's actually going yeah. on. Yes. And so the way to avoid that yeah. is to the ignorance trap is to yeah. take an interest, research yeah. your sources, yeah. don't just read the paper and assume that that's what's going on. Yeah. Look for criticisms against particular views. Yes. That's what will. Uh, sort of show give you, you a balanced yeah, right? standing. Yeah. They also promote the herd to be spectators. Yes. Mm. So we're not told to create anything. We yes. just actively consume yeah. information, TV, yeah. information, everything without questioning. Yes. Yes. And so he says the, the way around this is to take risks and yes. turn off <laughs> your TV. Turn <laughs> off your TV. Don't turn off your TV. And then they manufacture monsters. Yeah. So mm. part of the book talks about um, how they create objects of aggression. Yeah. And we saw this even when we did revolutions. Yeah. Every revolution needed that target yeah. yes. our enemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. America and the war on terror had Islam and terrorism yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for us, in our incursion to Somalia, we had you know, the yes. threat of Al-Shabaab. Yeah. So Absolutely. they create these fear, yeah. uh, fear, fear mongers and, yeah. and that's what we follow. Yeah. And to counteract this, yeah. he says to pr you have to protect your working memory. Yes. Take every value judgment from media with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask yourself constantly, mm. what are you been being distracted from? from yeah. yes. bono, yeah. Who is benefiting? Yeah. So when you're being shifted in that direction, there's probably something, something, else, something happening else happening that you're being distracted from. Yeah. And then the other thing the specialized class that he speaks about doesn't want mm. is people organizing and coming together. Yes. Yeah. They are anti Yes. People that like Jesus Christ and yeah. Martin Luther King mm -hmm. yeah. created these alternative movements yeah. against the states that were yeah. in power mm -hmm. then. Yeah. They were a huge threat. Yeah. Then the state took them out. Yes. Yeah. Right? That's very true. So, but th there is power in collective organization. Yes. yes. And there's power in coming together. Yeah. And there's something called the manual social media. Yes. Talking to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting off your phones and yeah. whatnot. Word of mouth. Yeah. Yes. And the importance of that interaction and reinforcing ideas yes. that can change the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Change your society. Yeah. yeah. And then the last thing really quickly he talks about yeah. mm -hmm. is uh, selective perce perception. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So countries tend to have a double standard when they interact with other countries. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you don't judge yourself by that same criteria. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think he gives the example of the US. Yeah. When they when they are attacked, it is terrorism. Yes. When the they US are attacked, 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 they're saving yes. the world. <laughs> they're, they're, they're yes. they're, they want you to it's have the democracy. It's the peace process, yeah. right? Yeah. You yeah. Know? So you have to be careful of that double standard. Yeah. Yes. And the last thing he says is that the dissidence culture is on the rise. Yeah. So the specialized mm. class yes. is <laughs> becoming a little less powerful because yes. of our organized collection of, yeah. of the masses. Absolutely. And he says, example, such as the WikiLeaks, yeah. the Panama, Panama Papers, papers that were yeah. leaked, and the Panama Papers showed us 
how rich people yes. in the world yeah. were hiding money uh-huh. yes. <laughs> that could help their societies, you know, yeah. they were avoiding taxes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also how social media is changing the way politics engages with us mm-hmm. yes. and how we engage with politics. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. And the big example here is how our, our consent was manufactured with Cambridge Analytica. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you got little messages telling you one thing, yes. if you supported yes. one party, Absolutely. and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff he has in this book, which uh, gives us... Great a lot of food for thought. thought. Absolutely, yes. yes. Do you, do, does this thing remind you of this um, narrative that we have, hustler dynasties, <laughs> and and uh, propaganda? The, yes, propaganda. Mm-hmm. And and because this uh, bewildered herd cannot organize themselves. Mm. Uh, someone was telling us earlier yes. uh, that that hustlers are like a crab in a barrel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know crabs when they're in a barrel. Mm-hmm. You actually can leave that barrel open. Yeah. And they cannot be able to, to climb out, to, to climb out because they'll also down. be p- uh, pushing each other out. Interesting. Now, the guy, the choice architect who creates that, the, the, the specialized class, mm-hmm. already know these people are going to be like that. Yes. But the reason why they, they, they swallow wholly their, their narrative is because they simply cannot be able to get it and, 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 and they're, mm-hmm. they're so yeah. differently I think what this book really tells us is that if you're able to understand how propaganda works and how the state is able to manipulate and manufacture your consent, if you are able to interrogate that, you yourself can lift the veil of ignorance. And I think that we do a good job, if I do say so myself, of (laughs) doing that on a daily basis. But I think it's also important for people to actively do it themselves. Yes, Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I think that was a good final final thought. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry to him. (laughs) 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 On a day where we had a winning headline from the Daily Nation and a winning title from Gamzo um, of The Standard, I want to leave you with this. The role of media in contemporary politics is forcing us to ask what kind of society we want to live in. Yeah. How do we engage better in the political process and how do we stop the manufacturing of, of our consent? Mm-hmm. I wish that you would subscribe to our channel <laughs> if you haven't already. <laughs> and please look for us on TV. We're mm-hmm. on GoTV, Pang Feature, and Star Times. Yes. Have a good evening.